what's up guys it is Carly here bringing you day 27 of my 31 days of horror and excuse my appearance I was practicing for um, a Halloween idea that I'm gonna do tomorrow I have to dress up as something and I had a makeshift idea so I put on all this makeup and of course I had to shower and wipe it off and the eyeliner kind of stayed on so I'm sorry if I look a little bit gothic or whatever in this video but Anyway, we are on to day 27, moving along here, and today I'm going to be talking about Scream 2. Um, yeah, like I said, I got this set here from the Woodsboro Bros, and I uh, decided to go ahead and revisit the three Scream movies. I actually watched part four earlier in the year because I recently bought it on Blu-ray as well, so it all works out, and I decided to... Go ahead and rewatch part two and three as well because I actually haven't seen those ones in quite a while and was curious about how my opinions have changed on them or stayed the same. So today I'm going to be talking about Scream 2 from the year 1997. Um, I thought this movie came out in 98. It says 97 on the back, but um, I, I might be mistaken there. But anyway, Scream 2. So this movie, uh, once again, it is following Sydney and um, you know she's away at college and uh, her old friend Randy is there as well and they're going to college now they're out of high school and of course Sydney is still kind of trying to get over what happened to her in high school she's pretty much uh, moved on with life for the most part but she still kind of struggles with things such as relationships with boys um, there is a love interest in this film and uh, she kind of struggles with um, getting too close with him for one it's kind of a trust issue and another is she doesn't want any of her loved ones to ever get hurt because of her so um, she's dealing with that and um, everything seems to be okay but then uh, you find out like right away in the movie that there is another person dressing up as ghost face going around killing people and that person ends up of course tracking down Sydney once again and hurting the people around her and trying to get to her as well so um, Dewey and Gail are also back in this movie and they're all trying to once again figure out what is going on who is this new ghost face killer and get to the bottom of what is happening now Scream 2 this is a movie I grew up enjoying quite a bit from what I remember um, I've always liked part one the most part three the least and then this one of course in the middle so literally one two three that's always been kind of how I felt about the movies and of course part four came way after but growing up at least that's um, how I felt about the original three and um, I was surprised to learn that a lot of people don't really like part two all that much and think it's kind of a crappy follow-up of sorts to the first movie so I was curious to rewatch it because it's been Quite a while since I've watched Scream 2. I've watched the first Scream uh, multiple times since, um, you know, being a kid, as well as Part 4 too. I've rewatched several times, but uh, Part 2 and 3 I've really kind of stayed away from for whatever reason, and uh, I was curious to see how I would feel about Part 2, and I could definitely see what people were saying now, especially after watching this one. I believe I watched it like the day after I watched the first Scream movie or a few days after and I can definitely see how it's a lesser film compared to Scream which is kind of a masterpiece in a way for its time and what it was doing and how clever it was. This feels a lot almost like a remake of the first movie but just not as good. Um, like I said you have Sydney, Gail, Dewey, and Randy returning in this movie but even with that, um, I feel like the Randy character just isn't as fun and funny as he is in the first movie. Um, he's still trying to be clever and uh, be, be self-aware of horror movies as he does, but uh, I just don't like him as much as I do in the first movie. Um, I, you know, I fall in love with the character in the first one, and this one is just kind of like, oh, there he is again. Um, you can take it or leave it. I am glad that they do have him back in this because I do enjoy when movies get people back but um, I just think he's kind of okay um, the whole college setting I'm not overly crazy about either I don't know why I just think um, I enjoy the high school setting a little more so that's not really a fair critique I suppose but kind of is because there's also some annoying characters in this movie um, you have this group of like sorority girls in this and I just find them to be 
a little bit annoying. I believe the one girl was actually the killer from, oh, spoiler alert, the killer from Urban Legend. Uh, I think it's Rebecca Gayhart, if I'm not mistaken, and I think she's awful in that movie, and I don't really like her in this movie either. She's um, obviously very annoying, and I uh, just don't really care for that whole group, or I'm just not a huge on college settings in general. I didn't go to a regular college, university, or anything like that, so I can't really get behind it or connect with it as well as I can with high school because obviously I went to high school, so that's just maybe a personal critique. Um, I guess it doesn't really hurt the movie, but uh, just the setting, setting wise, I didn't care for it. Um, this movie does have a really solid opening. The opening is obviously inspired by the movie He Knows You're Alone, which is an old 80s slasher that not too many people seem to know about, but I remember watching it on TV when I was young and thinking it was alright, not amazing or anything like that, but the opening to this movie is definitely inspired by that, and I think it's a solid opening that is very unrealistic by today's standards to have a bunch of people dressed up as the killer who is based on a real killer, and they're all wearing masks in the theaters. Um, I don't see that ever in a million years flying today, but it's a cool concept to uh, rouse up confusion and not knowing what's real and who's actually being stabbed and things like that. So I've always thought that was a really cool and powerful opening to the film. Um, have no problems with that. Um, this movie, it's mainly characters that I have problems with. Uh, like the Cotton Weary character is in this film. He's, you know, out of jail now and I've never cared for him either. I think he seriously just comes off as a lunatic and he's this dude that you're trying to prove the innocence for because obviously he was accused of murdering Sydney's mother and uh, that's not true, but the dude just seems like he's whacked out in the head and I just don't really care for that. Maybe it's because he was locked up for no reason that you would be acting like that, but I just don't like that guy at all and I never really, even when I was younger, I didn't like that character. Um, the reveal at the end with who is actually doing the killings is just feels very forced. It's not clever like the first movie is and uh, it's honestly kind of corny in a way. Like I said, it feels forced. That's the best way to put it. Um, it feels like they're trying once again to be clever but it just doesn't work and that uh, kind of leads me in summary, if I could just sum up a review on this, is it's the same movie as the first one, but just not as clever, not um, not as lovable of characters in this one, and uh, just too much more of the same, just not done as well. Um, I feel like I feel like all the screen movies are a lot of the same movie. They all just feel like kind of remakes of the first one in a sense, but this one coming right off of the first one and knowing that how many people love that one and what a great film it is. Uh, this one just feels very weak as the first sequel in the franchise, so um, that's kind of where it suffers there, but I still think it's an okay movie. It's one I will continue to rewatch because, like I said, it's one that I grew up with, but just not one that I would run back to a whole lot because, once again, it's a long movie just like the first one, and um, all these movies are like freaking two hours. Well, no. Just kidding. Um, first two were like two hours. No, all three of them are like two hours long. So um, that's kind of crazy. I never really realized that. But anyway, yeah, to sum it all up, uh, Scream 2, I believe I gave this like a 7.5 out of 10. Not a bad movie. Uh, kind of a weak sequel. And I would definitely not rewatch it as much as the first one. But once again, it's a Scream film. What are you going to do? There's not really much to be said about it. So yeah, um, 7.5 out of 10. Sorry if I rambled a little bit. In this review, I feel like there's not too much to say about the Scream sequels because they are a lot of the same, but yeah, uh, thank you guys once again for joining me for day 27 here on my 31 Days of Horror, and I will see you for day 28.